Yeah, yes, yes. And um, there's also like a, a, a thing where within genetics, um, there's a consciousness effect like currently, not just through different lives like we talked about. Um, Japanese scientists did experiments with monkeys, and they called it the 100 monkey effect. They would, there was a group of islands, and they would teach a certain amount of monkeys on one island uh, to perform certain techniques, you know, throwing things, memorizing things, um, losing things, and find, doing all sorts of different tricks and stuff. And the other monkeys on the other islands started picking up on the skills of the first group of monkeys that was taught on one island. And after that, it got dubbed the 100 monkey effect. So somehow the monkeys were able to transfer the information they were learning from one island to another island. So the other group of monkeys... There's no exposure, or did they have exposure to each other? No, no exposure. No, no exposure at all. And, and uh, the test would be done on one island, and then they would move to a different island. And the monkeys on the other island that they start to interact with would already have the skills that was pre-shown to the first group of monkeys, that the first group of monkeys learned. The monkeys on the other island, they didn't know how to do it beforehand. It wasn't until it was first introdu introduced to the first group. And, and so it, it's like something uh, through the ether, something how they're able, they're able to tap in through the ether and pick up on this information and utilize it in a way to where it's helpful for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, you you know. Uh, they've done the same thing on monkeys, but with humans, um, if you uh, give people crossword puzzles, and you know they've done it where like they give somebody yesterday's crossword puzzle, people do better on crossword puzzles than have all like say the New York Times or whatever you know. Right. So, M O what? Emojis, you know, like on your phone, send a oh. like smiley face or a picture of an apple or whatever. Right, yeah. I like those too. It makes me laugh. Okay, I don't, I think it's like, uh, you talked about ancient aliens and all of this stuff, and they always talked about all the other were helping the Egyptians, and you know, that's kind of the tangent that they'll go on if they are going on it. Yeah. It is really, and it, and when you think about it, like look at how what we call the, how we communicate with each other. We call it a text, like uh, exactly. ancient text, you know, a, te a text. And so here we look at all these things that oh, we're so modern and they're so backwards and this is so ancient, but we've lost information that we don't know what they actually knew. So you know, I see the Baghdad bomb and or the Baghdad light like, bulb. Like, 
Right, right. I believe I know how they how they built the pyramids. I don't think they use any machines or any workers. I think they naturally use the substance within the ether. They emit it some sort of like, you know how you look at incense and you can see incense go up? There was something that they were able to utilize to access hyperspace, like the ether around us, and naturally be able to place the blocks and do different things like that. Um, when you look at the pyramids, all you see is hieroglyphs. And how can you how can you design the pyramids and hieroglyphs? What language do they use to design it? You can't design you can't use mathematics and all that stuff based on pictures of birds and, and snakes and stuff. You know, the language they use to build the pyramids has never really been shown. And exactly. and so it, it Right. Right, yeah, yeah, definitely not what they build them with. Yeah, you got that. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, in today's world, like, you speak a Mandarin, if you have a typewriter, or a key, or, you know, maybe on a keyboard it's a little different, because you can have software, you know, all these programs and stuff, but when we first came from typewriters, you could never use a typewriter for Mandarin language, like, the Chinese language has, like, what, 3,000 characters or something like that? Yeah, and all specific words and all that kind of stuff, so it's like, you're not going to have a 26-character alphabet. Right. Right. That may eventually like develop. So our alphabet might end up expanding. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything about that, but I have heard it. Do you know anything about that? No, I don't. That's the first time I heard it, actually. Let, let me ask you. Okay, let me ask you this about languages. Have you noticed one? Have you noticed this? Like. You can go to different countries and experience all these different languages, and sometimes languages will be a lot alike. Uh -huh. 
Like in like in Germany, you, they say hello. In England, they say hello. Um, the indigenous people of the Americas, like they would say how. If you go to Hawaii, they say aloha. Like, have you noticed how all that sounds similar, but these people are so oh, far apart? Sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, extraterrestrials. I mean, it, it's it's very debatable. You know, don't don't quote me. It's very debatable. But the way I feel about it is, I I feel it's beyond a shadow of a doubt that extraterrestrials um are at the roots of languages that were given to humans, uh, the etymology, the the root words, and all this stuff all around the world. And um, you know, they're the masters of it. They're the masters of language. And uh. Right. 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 Yeah. You know, I remember one time I was sit like I was going to these after school classes. I was like in fifth grade, sixth grade, and I was going to these after school classes, and it, we were learning about religion and stuff. It was kind of you know, it was like a kids club. You know, so they would introduce religion, different things, and read the Bible. It was kind of like a Christian group that ran it. And, you know, we were talking about Noah and Noah's Ark. We were drawing pictures of it. And then a few months later, I was at my grandfather's house, and I was looking at a television. We were sitting there watching it, and on the History Channel, they were talking about the story of Gilgamesh. And I was like, Gilgamesh? Who is Gilgamesh? And my grandfather was like, oh, yeah, before Noah, you know, there was the Epic of Gilgamesh, which... Is a, is, a, is a Jewish interpretation of Noah, but it just predates the story of Noah. You know, it's an older version of it. Um, and so I made me think, I'm like, so why am I, why are they telling me about Noah? And there's a much older story that goes to Gilgamesh. It didn't really make sense to me. Like, why, why am I, why, why are people going off these stories? And there's older stories of those stories and probably older, you know, it probably goes back to the ancient Sumerian epics to begin with. And, and so... Well, I 